England and India are making history right now. Their women are playing a one-off test. It's day three today. And yesterday, England were declared on 396 for nine in their first innings. And at stumps, India's answer was 187 for five. Now, both sides have test experience, but women playing test is a rarity. Meanwhile, the men are making history as well today, as today marks day one of the World Test Championship final, New Zealand facing India, as they vie for the title of the very first Test World Champions. It's all happening at the Rose Bowl, Southampton, and it started at half past 11 this morning. If there's no result over five regular days of play, the teams will be crowned joint winners. More of this and interesting talk next. Hello and welcome to another episode of Offside Maidens. It's been a while and we've missed you. As usual, we have an incredible panel. I'm your host, Tara Lee, and we have the brilliant Emily over there. She's been playing cricket all the way in England, sitting there looking very studious, as I sure, I'm sure she is, as she's learning lots of new things in England. We have our resident juicer and, of course, cricket player, Leisha, looking ready to take on the world and, of course, the cricket pitch. And the Twins, they are cricket fanatics at heart. They love the game. They watch the game avidly. And, of course, they enjoy talking and writing about the game. So let's move on to today's topics. It is very interesting times, a very exciting week. New Zealand are going to be playing India or rather they are playing India over the next few days. And obviously, weather permitting, there is an extra day, a sixth day set aside, because we know what happens when there are World Cups or championships happening in England. Weather always comes into play, and we really experienced that during uh, the World Cup in 2019. And speaking of which, New Zealand are probably still thinking about their World Cup defeat, and now they have a bit of a chance to make up for that, even if only in their minds. So, like I said, there is a reserve day. And I wanted to ask you, um, Leisha, to this final, how fair do you feel the Test Championship has been? It started with the Ashes in 2019, before COVID. But let's face it, we've only seen a few nations really getting into it. Um. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like there, there are some teams that should have played a bit more test cricket so that they could also try to qualify for the for the final. But um, I think at the end of the day, if we look at it, New Zealand and India are two of the best teams to be in the final because it just it sets up like this amazing final. And you know what? I'm going to be so disappointed if rain plays a, a role in the result. I'm, I'm really, I'm not going to be chuffed about that. So please, rain God, just chill for five days. Um, but yeah, um, I feel like a few teams should have played a bit more test cricket just to see if they had a chance to get into the final, like the Proteas, for instance. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, New Zealand and India, I think it's going to be one of the best contests that we've seen in recent times. I have to agree, those are very good teams. I mean, they, they may have made it to the final anyways had it not been COVID-19. And I think that that's what you're getting at. These are strong teams. It's not, you know, a, a weak team or a team that will we'll question their abilities. Emily, how, how are you feeling about the fairness of the whole World Test Championship? Yeah, look, I think I read something um, a few days ago that said, you know, the rules are going to be changing slightly um, to make it a bit more fair. Because, um, yeah, I do think it's a bit unfair um, in terms of, you know, test matches played. Um, some nations have played, you know, virtually none. And some have played 20 or so, you know. So it is a bit unfair in that regard. But um, I think the rules are going to be changing slightly. But I am excited for this um, final because New Zealand, they thoroughly deserve to be there. Um, 
and we've played such good cricket over the past few few months. Um, you know, now coming off um, a win against England as well um, in England. So, yeah, they, they seem like they're raring to go. Um, India, on the other hand, haven't played a test match in, in a while. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, they, they don't necessarily have to... Um, you know, have come off a test win in order to perform well. But um, I think New Zealand might be the more comfortable side going in um, because they've played a lot more test matches recently. So, yeah, I'm going to be going to be interested to see um, who actually comes out on top. And Twins, what are your thoughts uh, about that? Well, actually, I, I mean, I agree with what Leisha said about um, you know, India and New Zealand being really strong teams to be in the World, Te- World Test sorry, Championship final. I don't know, I'm back in India, so I'm really hoping that India can walk away with this this title. Um, I'm also, I'm a big um, India fan as well, but I just, I don't know, to be honest with you, I'm kind of sitting on the fence for this one because I feel sorry for New Zealand just because, you know, they've been they've been close so many times, you know, probably should have won the World Cup there. There were a bit of um, mm. mistakes from, from umpires and, and, you know, just also just lack of how the game goes. But um, yeah, yeah I, I really... New Zealand have really been playing so well I and mean, then they deserve something. Um, but yeah, then again, yeah. India is a class nation. So oof, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence for this one. Um, but I also don't want, I don't want to draw. Mm. I also don't want to draw. New Zealand has, deserve, do deserve something, but we can't um, overlook yeah, India's pretty... performances either, you know. Mm. And, and I feel like India plays with so much more heart than New Zealand does. I'm not saying mm. New Zealand doesn't play with heart, but yeah. like India is just so passionate, you know, and you can feel it when they play, whatever format it is. Mm. And there's always something interesting happening with the India team. Like, you know, you're going to get something. Quality. Yeah, Quality. something great is going to happen. So, so well, maybe you'll even see Chiteshwa New Zealand. Pujara. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo. Yeah. But as you're talking about that and and how there's always something happening that's interesting with India, Indian captain Virat Kohli said that, you know, doing playing one test is not indicative of who the best team is because it's just Mm -hmm. one test. Do you feel that it should have been perhaps a test series rather than a one-off test? Yeah, I think maybe if I had a bit of a, a series going and you could have at least kind of matched them up on a scale instead of on just one match or one game. Yeah, like you have to be, you just have to give 110%. Like you can't just um, face yourself over the days. You literally, the first day you have to give absolutely everything. Yeah, so, so that's maybe a really... there's a bit more pressure actually on them. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe. Maybe if it was a series, it would have actually been a bit more like... Um, tension build up and then boom the final or something I don't know. yeah I don't know I was going to say on one hand like maybe it should have been three three test matches or whatever but mm. when I was thinking about it like in the World Cup you don't get three chances to, three finals yeah, you know <laughs> to win you get you get one chance you get one game so mm. I think it's you know it's the best whoever performs the best in all three departments is going to come out on top um you have one chance to to come out on top and you just got to put it all in. So I think one game is, it's exciting because, you know, it's just whoever plays the best in that game is going to win. Mm, sure. 100%. Alicia, do you have thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Emily. Like, I feel like this one test is going to just amplify every emotion that the players are feeling and, I feel like whoever plays as if they've never lost before is going to come out on top. So it's going to be so exciting. I agree with Emily. We don't get three chances. It's one chance. Do or die. Now and never. Um, India for the win. So. (laughs) Leisha's not biased at all. (laughs) I mean, we know this. (laughs) Lincha, what do you think it would take for the Proteas to be there in the final? If if it wasn't COVID, do you think that we'd stand a good chance? Given everything and all the inconsistencies with uh, the, the Proteas and everything that's been happening behind the scenes, administrative issues, do you think that we would have, in this particular test championship, um, do you think that we would have 
had a chance at making it to that final? <clears throat> no. <laughs> because, not because like I, I'm biased or anything, but because I feel like the protests are, are still in a restructuring phase and they have to rebuild before they can even think about the World Cup Championship. Maybe one day, like looking at the performance against the West Indies, um, if they can keep that up and maintain that momentum, then maybe in the next or even the next one, they could possibly be in the World Test Champion. But for now, we are still very much in the rebuilding stage, still finding the players, how to utilize them. So, But I feel like with the talent that we have and with the talent that's coming up, we've got the potential to possibly one day be in the World Test Champion final, but not now. We first have to focus on restructuring now. Are you, are you in agreement with that with that twins? Maybe one day, but we still have a lot of work, and it may take maybe not even the next Test Championship, maybe the one after that. That's years, and mm. we may have a different Test captain by then. Hey, oh, yeah, I mean, I agree with Lee. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> I agree definitely. The the team is still very much in a restructuring phase, and we still need to find the the right. I wouldn't say recipe that works because at the moment we're still just throwing things around and trying to make something good still um, out of it. But it's not a it's not a bad thing. I think it's it's something that was necessary and something to work towards. But yeah, I think it's um I think we can you know um reach such greatness of playing and 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 world test championship things. Um, it it won't obviously won't happen now. But like obviously like you said few years, give it some time, might have a new test captain. Um, yeah, there obviously will be a lot of new things, but I think we can eventually get there. Indeed. And speaking of new things and new test captains and perhaps new players and up-and-comers, Emily, do you think that the last test that we played, that perhaps we should have played more youngsters, um, given more people a, an opportunity to put their hands up <laughs> Look, um, you can't ask too much. <laughs> um, you know, Calvarena, I was very happy that he finally, you know, sort of got a chance there. Um, and I think, you know, they, they're bringing the youngsters in quite slowly. Um, so I I would have probably wanted more, yes, but I'm happy that, you know, we got something. <laughs> um happy that Carl got um, an opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think what the twins were saying, I think... Um, you know, the restructuring is going to take time. Um, you know, every team goes through this um, restructuring and, you know, obviously you lose big players. Um, you need to bring in youngsters. So it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but I do think we'll get there. I mean, look at England. You know, once they lose Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson, they're going to have to find two, you know, really fast bowlers um, and swing bowlers to bring up. Um, so, yeah, every team has to restructure um, and you know at different times you know England might be restructuring when when we're um, you know in a really good space so yeah it always test cricket always ebbs and flows um, and teams also ebb and flow so yeah we have a chance um, not sure when but I, I do believe that we have a chance to be back back at the top. It's, it's always a thing when teams are restructuring it's like everything kind of comes to a halt as Teams try and figure that out. Alicia, what, what do you think is the perfect recipe for, in, instead of having everything come to a halt, what, what, what do you think is the perfect recipe to continue that conveyor belt of players coming um, in and, and being able to take up the mantle and do the thing in, in test cricket? I think, I think, I think a, a perfect example of that is, is the Indian team. That's one of the reasons why I like them is they have these local competitions, domestic competitions where it's three days and four days where the youngsters get to play and showcase their talent. And once a youngster is scouted, um, they are looked after, you know, coming up into the pipeline. And they, are, they get the exposure, like with the IPL and other competitions, they get the exposure around these big players like... Um, I can't come to any player's name now. <laughs> but yeah, they, they get the exposure <laughs> around these players and 
like the Indian team, like they did with Rishabh Pant, um, Washington Sundar, um, Shaman Gill, they they integrate the youngsters with the uh, more experienced players on the on the national platform. And I think that's that's what we need to do more of in the future, so that these youngsters don't get stage right when they get the opportunity, so that they can just step in and be as comfortable as possible, like they are with with their roles in domestic. And that I feel like that's going to be um, the difference in us going forward and bringing the youngsters into the system and actually building up to that number one spot. So you speak about domestic cricket and now recently they are doing away with two-day and three-day cricket. Do you think that this is going to harm the production of these players coming in and moving on this uh, conveyor belt into the test team? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Um, I feel like it has to start at grassroots level. Like for myself as a club cricketer, even as um, school cricketers younger than me, we need to be conditioned so that we don't run into injuries or whatever um, and not mental fatigue when we get to the place where we have to play the longer format. So I feel like it's, it's, it's going to do us harm in the future, like even now, but it's going to do so much harm because we won't be conditioned once we have to, once we are asked to step up our game. Because how can you ask someone who's only playing 50 overs or one um, T20 to go play a five day or four day? It's crazy. You're asking for injuries. You're asking for fatigue, mental fatigue, um, and conditioning just won't be there. So I feel like it's really going to harm us in the future and it's going to put a halt on that conveyor belt so yeah i think that needs to be rethought actually that's that's a really stupid decision if i'm honest and it makes sense because obviously when you're playing limited overs when you're playing 50 over cricket or t20s you you think about it in your mind but now to prepare yourself to play test cricket without having played test cricket that's a difficult thing having never played uh, two-day or, or three-day cricket, to just come in and now having to play five-day cricket, it's definitely a mental thing, as well as you said, uh, a physical thing. You don't have that, that fitness, that endurance. You don't understand what it feels like to be on the field for that many days and at, um, at that level. Twins, what are your thoughts on, on, on this? Do you agree with Leisha or, or do you think, no, these youngsters, they can come in and they can play and they can do it? They just Actually, need I some mental coaching. Maybe. I, 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 I agree because I don't know. I'm not a player. I don't know the, 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 the ins and outs of everything, but I think from the insight that I've heard from my colleague, um, <laughs> I do think that it is kind of cutting away the opportunity to to play more games and to develop as a player, like Misha said, um, now they just you know get put on in a, in the national team or something, and then they they don't really uh, perform as well, or like you said, the injuries, and then sort of puts them off, and then we already um, lose out on having solid youngsters, for instance, in the teams, and now um, yeah, I think. I think it is kind of yeah halting any kind of development because to be able to do something well you have to practice and do it often. So if the three day, two three day um, cricket tournaments will fall away, I think that's kind of defeating the purpose of cricket development. IMO. Oh, I mean I don't know. I don't think. Well, I think it's just something that they can just try and see how it goes. I don't know. I don't know how detrimental to really be for the game. And um, and I mean, they're all youngsters. So I know we always like to think, okay, but that's how we've done it in the past. And that's how we usually do it. But I mean, there's enough time to, you know, experiment, I suppose. And they have such a brilliant opportunity to prove themselves in these situations. So I don't think it'll be too bad. It'll probably be a, a big adjustment for them. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to see from both sides which way it goes. Yeah. 
an interesting point of view. Emily, you are playing club cricket right now. And if I said, listen, Emily, tomorrow you're going to play some five day. You're going to play a test match. How would how would that affect you mentally? Would would you be like, okay, I, I can pace myself. How would that affect you having not played five day cricket or two day or three day? You know, I'd say yes, please. I'd love to play. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I'd love to obviously play a, a test match. But um, in in all seriousness, yeah, I think it would be quite tough um, because <laughs> so we play we play forty overs. We don't even play fifty overs. Um, so after 40 overs, I'm like, yo, like when, when, we, like after, when we get to 30 overs, I'm like, when are we getting to 40 overs? 10 more overs, guys, just 10 more overs. So, I mean, I've already, I've already gotten used to 40. Um, and then when I get home, obviously you have to add an extra 10 in, in my brain. So imagine, you know, now thinking of, I don't know how many, 100, 200, 300, however many overs, you know, a test match is, um, it is quite a mental shift. Um, and also obviously physically it's, it's a lot as well, because, um, you know, you could spend a whole day in the field. Um, you have to wake up next morning. Okay, let's go again. You know, um, so it is. I mean, it is a lot to expect. Um, you know, if you haven't been playing test matches or or two days or three days or four days, um, and then you know it sort of gets just sprung on you at at international level. So I think what Leisha was saying, it's very important. I think even at school level, um, I'm not sure if they do it so, but. Even just like two days, you know, Saturday and Sunday, two day matches. Um, just getting them into the longer format. Um, you know, anything more than fifty overs. Um, because at school level, I know they play time cricket, but you know, just getting longer formats so that they can get used to it at, at a young age already. Um, and I think it's crucial to have three day matches in domestic level. Um, because yeah, then when you get to franchise, it's four day and international is obviously five days. So just bu building it up consistently um, would be helpful to prevent, you know, injuries and to get into the right mindset and everything. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, yeah, we, we definitely can't, we can't do away with um, three day matches. I think those are very important, like what Leisha was saying, to bring, you know, the youngsters in and to, to have that convey about um, that system going. Yeah. But unfortunately they are doing away with it. And, from what everyone said here, it seems that it's going to be to our detriment, but hopefully not. We never know until we see it all in action and in practice. Until then, we're going to have to wait and see. But Leisha, you play cricket, you train, and you've never played um, two-day or three-day cricket. No, I haven't. I mean, 40 hours is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot on the body. Um, and to play, I don't even want to think about the longer format, although I would love to play a longer format. But right now, I, I don't even want to think about it. Like, just the level of fitness that it requires is a lot. Um, that's why, I think that's why um, us provinces have this um, winter program going, like, started three weeks ago, three months ahead of the season. And that is just for... Um, 50 hours and T20s. So I can't even imagine the preparation that it's going to take for longer formats. But it's something that I would like to play in the future, but I'm not prepared because I don't have the foundation. I've never played a longer format. So to ask me to go play a five-day dive is going to be like asking me to go and run a marathon without like training, <laughs> you know? And it's not going to happen. <laughs> But could you explain to us why it is that you've never played uh, two-day or three-day cricket? Okay, I'm going to take a dig at the province now. <laughs> um, because in, in, in the cribs, <laughs> um, the women's structure, the club structure is, is not great. Like, even for a normal league, we get our fixtures, like, we'll prepare from September when we expect to play. But then we'll get our fixtures like in January, two days before we must play. And then we have to prepare for like two T20s on a weekend, like the Thursday and start the Saturday. Um, so I think it is the structure. Yeah, there's, there's no proper structure and there's no, there's no one that actually wants to enforce proper structure when it comes to women's cricket. Yeah. So yeah, they, they just don't care, to be honest. 
um, that's why we're not playing. And even in school, we're not having um, a two-day or longer formats because of the structure that, you know, the province has sucks. But um, it's something that, that I would like someone to look at and to reinforce. Like, I feel like we have to play longer formats so that we can get conditioned. Especially now that we are seeing England and India, the ladies, uh, playing a one-off test match right now. Now, the last time South Africans or South African ladies have played test cricket, I think, was in 2014 against England and India. And that was a very long time ago. So in order for our ladies to, I mean, because there's, there's no scenario really where ladies are consistently playing, you know, two-day, three-day, or four-day cricket. And then to just come out here and now play test cricket on the international scene is going to be quite grueling, especially when we look at our current team and we look at how many South African ladies have actually played test cricket. So, so throughout history, uh, I believe there have been 57 ladies in total who have ever played uh, test cricket. And I say this, but most of those ladies were in the 60s, the 70s. And as you know, that was during the apartheid years. And then, of course, there was a break because we weren't allowed to play international cricket. So if we look at the list of, of, of ladies that have played, so 2002, it was there. But if we look at the current list, so of current players, there's a few. There's a few that could make up a nice test team. I mean, the Nefan Nikek played in the 2014, as did Marizan Kap, Lizal Lee, um, Chloe Tryon. So there are a few of our ladies, but we definitely need to work on, on prepping because every uh, female cricketer that we've spoken to said that they would love to play test cricket. And we would love to see it. I mean, Emily, doesn't that excite you, the thought of seeing our ladies actually making it and, and, and playing test cricket? But we, of course, we need to prepare for that. Yeah, of course. You know, test cricket is the best format of the game, purest format of the game. Um, and obviously, everyone, you know, every, every woman would want to um, play test cricket. So I think we do need to prepare for that. Um, the question is, you know, how do we prepare for that? How do we... Um, because like you said, Tara, you know, women don't get to play consistently. So I think the first thing they need to do is is get, you know, longer formats of the game for women more consistently. So, you know, this test match as well, it's not even five days, it's four days. So, I mean, if we just start there, for example, you know, get more four-day test matches, international matches for women, um, you know, let them play more consistently Um you know, get maybe World Test Championship, get that format for the women as well, you know, have that competitive format. Um, and, yeah, you know, just to introduce it and to sort of um, have that exciting element to it so that people can um, watch it. I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people would want to watch women as well play test cricket. So I think, yeah, just introducing it more frequently definitely needs to happen because <laughs> you can't have it every seven. You can't have it once every seven years. <laughs> needs to be, you know, a lot more often than that. Um, I think... You need to, needs to be every year, actually. So, yeah, I think yeah. introduce it. Yeah, and I, and I think overall, South Africa have played just twelve Test matches, and half of them have been against England. That's just that's twelve Test matches ever. Yeah, and I that's think ridiculous like, almost. Yeah, I think involving you know other nations as well, not just the England, India, South Africa, Australia, not just those four, you know, get the yeah. West Indies in, you know, get Thailand in, Ireland, you know, all the nations, Um, you know, all, all women, I think we said this before, like all women deserve to play the game, you know, and all nations, all men, all nations, everyone. <laughs> so just introduce it to everyone. And um, I think it will, it will get, it, it will get a lot more popular from there on. Yeah. Twins, would you like to see uh, our South African ladies out there on a test pitch against any nation? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think, well, yeah, I, and we weren't as involved with cricket 
at the time when we were playing tests when you said like 2014 so I'm really hoping to now that we are kind of more aware of what's happening to kind of at least see our women as well playing the um, test format because I mean just watching England and India go head to head um, for two days just for two days even only just watching them even the young Indians just making amazing um, scores for themselves and on their debut and it's just really nice to see so I really hope that our um, our youngsters or our women team can also um, you know break records and mm -hmm. make history as well so yeah it will be great to see our teams playing test and like Emily said all nations and yeah. have a world test championship women's thing or something or yeah, that'll be that'll be cool, and then then they must just broadcast it, obviously, so we can watch it <laughs> live. Yeah. Hopefully, yes. I mean, it, it has been very exciting, uh, England and India. And you were talking about youngsters performing. There was mm. seventeen year old um, Shafali Verma Shafali. who hit a thirteen fours and two sixes, and that she hit the highest score by an Indian woman on Test debut, mm. ninety six. Absolutely yeah, excellent. Yeah, I don't know. I think her, her, she's got the highest score for a debutant female or something like yeah, that. Yeah, she does. Um, she did, yeah. So that's really cool. She's 17. like that's And only 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Such a brilliant sure. for her career. So we need to talk good. to her about how she prepared for that. We can learn mm, the yeah, secret. We do. <laughs> show, you know? We need to get mm. her on the show. <laughs> yes, mm. we should. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And then also, just something I wanted to touch on because earlier I was talking about that uh, almost majority of the women, South African women who have ever played cricket, that was in the apartheid years and, and before mm. isolation. And we, I mean, before, you know, the world boycotted us, it was a good thing mm. at the time because, you mm. know, it helped our yeah. government realize all the things. But I'm not going to get too deep into that. But it is nice to see, you know, uh, all-rounder Sophia Dunkley. She created mm. history when she received her maiden test cap ahead of this one of test against India as she became the first black woman to play test cricket for England. And she hit an unbeaten 74 before England declared, of course. Oh. That's brilliant. That is amazing. Um, you are nodding your head there, Alicia. You are in agreement at this brilliance. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You want to see uh, more of that? Uh, yes, and and not just more of that. Like I want to see, uh, want to see more of that. But like her innings was just brilliantly put together. Like I enjoyed watching. I was like, look at this girl taking the opportunity, you know, creating history and just reveling in that opportunity. It was just amazing. So I was like, oh my word, I'm not leaving this TV here. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was really brilliant to watch. And do you think that we should still be celebrating things like the first black woman or the first black man or the first black captain, given the climate with, you know, Black Lives Matter? And we saw our, our men's team um, at the start of a particular test, some uh, kneeling, others raising a fist and some or, or rather one not doing either. Um, <laughs> that's one, yeah whatever i feel like it is still important to celebrate something like that because i feel like um as black players we haven't we haven't really been given the opportunity in the past to celebrate these victories you know so it's still important to celebrate it like you know i done this i've done this you know no one else has so i definitely think we still should be celebrating um black women and black men coming up and stepping up and just showcasing their talent where in the past they haven't been able to do so. So I really do think it's important. As for that one that didn't do anything, whatever, mate, we're still going to be doing the things, whatever. <laughs> and that's the official message from the Offside Maidens. But remember that the views and opinions are that of the individual and not that of Cricket Fanatics magazine. So as always be liquor thank you for joining us we've had a fantastic time thanks ladies it's been incredible and remember to like subscribe push that notification bell.
do all of the things. If you want to become a patron, you can. The links are all in the bio as well as the bios on all of the social media platforms. It's been brilliant. Take care, stay safe and enjoy.